This is EC4960, Senior Design 2. We are Team 13 and we are going to do the project review for our electronic dartboard. Objective and Motivation Darts is a popular game that is in need of a conventional and cost-effective way to add automation and connectivity. Our goal was to create an original method of playing darts with an automated scoring system that uses the principle of electromagnetic induction for less than $500. Project Deliverables An electronic dartboard with electromagnetic sensing technology an LED scoring display that actually has two displays for both players, an RFID reader for player identification, traditional metal tip darts with RFID technology, and a robust wooden stand. System diagram. The system is powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is connected to the dartboard via an amplifying circuit. These are both powered by a 5 volt power supply. There are also two spy buses connecting the displays and the player interface with the RFID reader, LED, and start button to the Pi Pico. This is the pinout for the Pi Pico microcontroller. Now I will go over our hardware setup. I will start by explaining the Dart setup. As you can see in the top right corner, we have an original dart with electrical tape. Under the electrical tape are ring magnets, like the one shown to the left. We have approximately four ring magnets on the dart. On the right hand side, we have a regular dartboard with copper wire surrounding each scoring section. We wrap each scoring section with five loops of copper wire for the induction. I will now explain our wiring diagram and amplification circuit setup. One of our first considerations for our amplification circuit was bipolar versus unipolar op amps. We originally wished to use bipolar op amps for player identification. However, because of their return to zero characteristics, the fact that you have to use physical potentiometer positionings to tune their zero points and um, their higher power draw, they were deemed infeasible for the project. Also, it was later discovered that the mutual inductance of the copper coils would have been a death sentence for any bipolar design. Another consideration was that our multiplexing solution fell through due to signal degeneration through the multiplexing chips. Because of this, we had to massively increase the amount of op operational amplifiers in our amplification circuit. This was suboptimal, but we had to go forward with limited supplies. We simplified the dartboard design so that each loop encompassed two zones, and we removed the idea of score multiplication for these special zone hits. The amplification characteristics for each stage were chosen with considerations to noise reduction and signal stability. The first stage is a, a non-inverting operational amplifier that has a gain of 22. The second stage is also a non-inverting operational amplifier that has a gain of 330. These values were chosen to reduce the amount of noise present in the output signal as well as being available to accomplish with the resistors that we had on hand. 100 microfarad capacitors are placed throughout the design on the output of the first operational amplifier and the input of the second operational amplifier. These capacitors elongate our signal times from approximately five milliseconds to the order of one and a half seconds approximately. The first operational amplifier stage is the most important stage for signal acquisition and noise reduction, so its gain was chosen with the highest consideration to those factors. RFID is used for game start and player identification. On the picture on the left, one player would press the push button to start game 
and then both players would scan one dart each, where each dart has an RFID sticker. This will let the game know which darts belong to who. On the right, we have a picture of our circuit diagram showing how the RFID module communicates with our PyPico through SPI bridge. For scoring, we utilize two LED displays, one for each player displaying their current score. On the right, we have a circuit diagram showing how our LED display connects to the PyPico. The software controlling the game implements a couple of separate loops. At the beginning of the game, it waits for a button press and then flashes the light to indicate to the player that the game has begun. It then starts polling for an RFID scan, and depending on which set of darts was scanned, it will initialize that set as the active player. Then it will enter a loop, where it waits until either a button is pressed, or a new RFID is scanned, or a coil hit happens. When a coil hit happens, it increments a counter, and also displays the score of that coil hit. Once three darts have been successfully hit, it'll move on to the next player. Otherwise, if a button is pressed or if the RFID is scanned for the next player, it will move to that player. That player will begin the exact same loop, and after their turn is over, it'll display the winner, and then go back to the beginning. These are the various voltage requirements for our components. Our Raspberry Pi is powered by 3.3 volts, going into the V bus. The LM324 op-amp integrated circuit chips are powered by 5 volts coming from our power supply. The MAX7219 display driver are powered by 3.3 volts coming from the Raspberry Pi. And the RFID module is also powered by 3.3 volts from the Raspberry Pi. Here are some of our other important components. We use 24 gauge copper wire, about 125 feet. This length can vary depending on the dartboard size. Initially, we planned on using smaller gauge wire, such as 44 gauge. However, this was too thin to handle and it would break easily. We also use 22 100 ohm resistors, 11 2.2 kilo ohm resistors, and 11 33 kilo ohm resistors for our op amps. 22 100 microfarad capacitors, a push button, and an LED. Here is a video of our project. The strengths of our project are that it has reliable DART detection at the electromechanical level. We have low uh, passive power consumption and low active power consumption as well as the pulses are very short. We have a simple modular design that is easily scalable and modifiable in terms of the amount of coils we have, the size of the DART board, and the possible decoding nature of our dartboard loops. The weaknesses of our project are that it has ambiguous dart detection on borders and bullseye as the copper wires take up physical space and we do not have a dart separator blade to disambiguate which loop the dart hits. Fallen darts are not decremented from the score currently we failed to implement a dart catcher and scanning system as the RFID scanning technology could not be implemented onto the darts in a way that could scan any falling darts. We also have loop crosstalk on edge connections. This is especially a problem with our bullseye as it has more loops than any other loop. And so when a neighboring loop is hit with a dart, we see a response in that bullseye loop that gives us false readings under certain conditions. Lastly, we would like to talk about the future improvements of this project. We could start with higher resolution grids, alternative dart detection. We've spoken about 
using lasers for detection or acoustics, a better fallen dart detection, still using RFID but allowing a RFID that can scan further ranges, multiplexing, so we could use each amplifier circuit for multiple zones on the DART board. This would drastically reduce the amount of operational amplifiers required for the project design and allow us to create a DART board grid with a higher resolution, better RFID placement on the DARTs so we would not have to remove a wing and allow the DART to fly like it's originally supposed to, and a larger display with a GUI. We would like to end this presentation by thanking Clemson University as well as the computer and electrical engineering departments and a special thank you for Dr. Raza for coaching us through this and allowing us to do this project for our senior design two class.